In the last video, we began to look at two-dimensional NMR spectroscopy by focusing on correlation spectroscopy, or COSI for short. In the COSI experiment, what we were doing was looking at what protons are spin coupled to one another. And by looking at the X and Y axes and finding these so-called cross peaks, we could determine which protons signals were spin coupled. We refer to that as a homonuclear correlation experiment because we are looking at two of the same type of proton, meaning two different hydrogen atoms. Here, what we are going to start doing is looking at heteronuclear correlations, specifically focusing in this video on heteronuclear single quantum coherent spectroscopy or HSQC for short. And we will focus this video primarily on the heteronuclear single quantum coherence correlations between protons and carbon 13. The HSQC experiment can also be done for other types of heteronuclear coupling as well. For example, coupling of nitrogen 15 with carbon 13. And that can be very useful in the field of protein biochemistry and determining the structures of proteins. Because if we think about the backbone of a protein, we have throughout the backbone nitrogen carbon bonds. And so by looking at the heteronuclear single quantum coherence spectroscopy for nitrogens that are bonded to carbons, we can piece together the backbone of the protein or start to piece together the backbone of the protein. So what we are going to be looking at whenever we are doing a heteronuclear single quantum coherence um, spectroscopy experiment is it is going to tell us two heteroatoms that are directly bonded to one another. So it's going to indicate direct bonds between the heteroatoms that we are evaluating. And so in the case of what we're going to focus on, the proton carbon 13 HSQC experiment, it is going to tell us which protons are directly bonded to which carbon atoms. If we were doing this as a nitrogen 15 carbon 13 experiment, instead it would be telling us which nitrogens are directly bonded to which carbons in the molecule. So this is going to give us an additional piece of the puzzle as we are determining the complete chemical structures of organic molecules. What I'm showing here is the HSQC spectrum for a representative organic molecule. When we look at the HSQC spectrum, the two axes of this two-dimensional NMR spectrum are going to show us that on the y-axis, we have carbon-13 plotted. And we can tell this is carbon-13 because of the fact that this axis goes from about 0 up to 160. This is far broader range than what a proton NMR spectrum range is. On the other hand, the x-axis of our spectrum here ranging from one to about nine is within the range of a proton NMR spectrum. So on the X axis, we have our proton NMR spectrum. Y axis has the carbon NMR spectrum and the signals that we see, all of these peaks here represent which carbon atoms are bonded to which protons. So if we follow across, for example, we say we're going to look at the signal right here that I'm drawing the dotted line to, if we follow that over to the y-axis, we see that it shows up at about around, we'll say 68 ppm. And if we then follow this up to here, it shows that it's popping up about where that triplet is located. We follow that down to determine where that is in ppms. It looks like it shows up at about 4.9 ppms. So what we could determine based on this is that the proton or protons at 4.9 ppm are directly bonded to the carbon that gives a signal at 68 ppm.
So in other words, looking at this as a carbon-hydrogen bond, this hydrogen at 4.9 ppm is directly bonded to the carbon at 68 ppm. So this is going to indicate which carbons are directly connected to which hydrogens throughout the molecule. If we were instead doing this as a nitrogen carbon correlation experiment, it would be showing us which nitrogens are directly bonded to which carbon atoms throughout. And as you can imagine, as the number of carbon atoms and hydrogens in the molecule grows, the spectrum can become very crowded with different signals. So the other thing that we can determine based on some HSQC spectra is some HSQC spectra will show us whether the protons that are connected to the carbon appear as a CH, a CH2, or a CH3. So it can help us determine whether we are looking at a primary, secondary, or tertiary carbon. A quaternary carbon is not going to show up in this spectrum because a quaternary carbon has no directly bonded hydrogen. So if the spectrum is color coded in red and blue, what will be the case is that the red signals are going to represent CH or CH3. So in other words, if we see a signal in red, such as these down here, kind of in the lower left hand side, or some up over here, those are always going to represent either CH or CH3. We can't tell based on the red signal here, here, or here, whether it does indeed represent a CH or a CH3. You would have to look at things like the integral of that particular signal that it corresponded to. So red is going to correspond then to primary carbons, such as would be the case with a CH3, or tertiary carbons, which would be the case with CH. On the other hand, the blue signals that we see here will represent CH2s, secondary, high, secondary carbons. So blue signals all throughout here will represent CH2 groups. And that doesn't matter if the two hydrogens are equivalent or not, meaning the two hydrogens that are bonded here, whether or not they give the same chemical shift or not, they are going to show up as blue. So if you look at something like this blue highlighted region in the spectrum right here, and we were to follow that up, it actually goes to two different proton signals here. It goes to the proton signal here and the one over here. And so this is a CH2 group where the two hydrogens have different chemical shifts slightly. One of them has a chemical shift that is a bit more upfield here, and the other one's a bit more downfield there. And you can, in some cases, even have chemical shifts that are spaced even more widely apart. So for example, here, the two protons that I've highlighted in blue here that are showing up at around a carbon chemical shift of about 42 or so ppms. That carbon that it is at 42 ppms is bonded to two hydrogens. One of them has a chemical shift following this down here that's at about 2.2 ppms. The other one coming over to here this other proton has a chemical shift that's closer to 3 ppms. So these two Protons, since they are both there in exactly the same line, that means they're both bonded to the carbon that is at about just a little uh, down from 40, so something like 42 or so. And then the protons are shown here and here with their chemical shifts found by going down to the x-axis there and determining where those reside. So HSQC is a very useful experiment for determining which heteroatoms are directly connected to one another. In this case, looking at which hydrogens are directly bonded to which carbons. And we can also, if the experiment is run properly to do this, we can determine which groups are CH and CH3 because those will show up as red. CH2s will show up as blue. Although this information is not always given, um, sometimes these are run in a way that doesn't give information about 
whether or it is a CH, CH2, or CH3 group. Um, but if that information is there, certainly it's worth using. So let's now take a look at an example of an HSQC NMR spectrum. We are going to look at this HSQC NMR spectrum for isobutanol, the structure whose molecular um, representative model is shown on the screen, and I'm drawing out the line angle formula for that structure now. In the upper left-hand corner, we see the proton NMR spectrum. We can recognize that because of the fact there's multiplicities of the atoms throughout here, and the x-axis range also gives us a clue that, that has to be a proton spectrum. Carbon-13 NMR spectrum over here. Notice that this goes all the way downfield past 200 ppm. That's definitely carbon-13 with that wide range, not proton. And also we notice that these are shown as single peaks, not generally as these multiples that we receive for proton NMR. And then our HSQC spectrum down here, where on the y-axis we have our carbon data plotted. And we have only plotted this up to 100 ppm because notice that in the carbon-13 spectrum, all of the signals are upfield from 100. And so therefore we don't need to plot past there. Likewise with the proton NMR spectrum, we see that on the x-axis and we cut that off at around 3.5 ppm. And what we have superimposed on the axes are on the y-axis, what I'm circling here is that the 1D carbon-13 spectrum has been superimposed on the x-axis here, the one-dimensional proton spectrum has been plotted. And what we find as the signals in this spectrum are we see a signal here, here, and here. And what those represent is which protons are directly connected to which hydrogen. So looking at this, if we take a look at this most downfield signal in our proton spectrum, we follow that up. What we can say is that the signal, the protons that are at 3.5 ppm, protons are directly bonded to the protons, if we follow this, to the carbon, if we follow this over, that is at about 70 ppm. So with that, knowing that our 3.5 ppm protons are connected to the carbon at 70 ppm, we can also look at with the 3.5 ppm signal for the protons. We look over here, and when we were evaluating the integral of that, we saw that that signal integrated to a value of 2. And so we could describe this as being a CH2 group. And those two CH2s, the two protons there, are equivalent to one another because we see only a single chemical shift for them. If the two hydrogens here were non-equivalent, meaning the two hydrogens of the CH2 group were in different environments, we would see them have different chemical shifts, and then she would have one signal here and one signal somewhere else. But since the CH2 group here is part of carbon-carbon single bonds, they aren't constrained into a ring or locked into double bonds or anything, they are going to show up as a single signal. So this CH2 group that is at 3.5 ppm, which was one thing that we determined in our cozy spectrum analysis in the last video, is our hydrogens here. And the carbon at that position is at 70 ppm. Then if we continue over, if we look, say, at the signal right here, following that up to here, and then over, what we can conclude based on this is that the proton that is at about 1.75 ppm is directly connected to the carbon that is at about 30 ppm because of that correlation that we're seeing following this down and matching up where it is on the x-axis there at 1.75, following this over, we get our 1.75 ppm proton directly connected to our 30 ppm carbon. And our 1.75 ppm signal for the proton was right here. And it integrated to one, as we see in tiny print up there at the top. And so that's just one proton 
in that, and that happened to be this guy right here. So what we could say is that this is a 1.75 ppm proton signal that is directly connected to that carbon. At that position would be at 30 ppms in our carbon NMR spectrum. And then carrying onward here, if we look at our doublet right here, we follow that up, that doublet, this is about 0.9 ppm, we see this signal here that we then follow over to the y-axis to determine that that signal is at about 20 ppm. And we notice if we look at here in the proton spectrum, the signal that was at 0.9 ppm, that is the one that goes with this guy right here, that integrated to a value of six, and that's going to be represented by our two methyl groups right here. So that integrates to six hydrogens, and we can deduce that that proton signal there that is at 0.9 ppms represents our protons, and the carbon that is directly bonded there is at about 20 ppm. And then you will notice one additional signal here, that's the signal right here at about 2.6 ppm. And if we look at our NMR spectrum at about 2.6 ppm where that signal is right here, if we come all the way up here, we see no signal there, no cross peak, indicating that this particular proton is not directly bonded to any carbon. And that suggests to us that this represents the hydroxy group proton within the molecule. So with that, we can conclude that this hydroxy group proton is what shows up at about 2.6 ppm. And generally, protons that are bonded directly to oxygen show up as a singlet if they show up at all. So with that, we can come up with the complete connections between carbons and which hydrogens those carbons are directly bonded to within the molecule. We generally use this information in combination with the other 1D and 2D NMR experiments to piece together the complete structure of the molecule. In the next video, what we will look at is interpretation of the so-called HMBC experiment, heteronuclear multiple bond correlation, which will give us information on which protons are two to three bonds or so away from which carbon atoms. So rather than looking at what hydrogens and carbons are directly connected, we're going to look at longer range interactions between the protons and the carbon atoms in these 2D NMR experiments.